at the stadium. At the stadium. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's at the stadium. It's All been right. at the stadium for the last couple of You know it's going to be an early game. So it'll be 4 o'clock. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it's an early game. So oh. make sure you, you know, get out. Thank you and welcome to the show this morning. The topic this morning is the impact of technology on education and learning. And we're fortunate enough to have with us to talk about the impact of technology on education and learning, Dr. E.K. Sanford from Tennessee State University. And of course, Dr. Sanford, let me welcome you to the show this morning and to tell you again how delighted we are to have you here because you bring such excellent information, especially when you deal with education and technology and et cetera. And so let's uh, start off by having you to give us some information about your background, education, and some of your experiences. And then we'll get into the topic, the impact of technology on education and learning. I and think that's the title. That's, that's, that's the title. title. You okay. always get it right. And thank you again so much for allowing me to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm always delighted to share information and, and to have this as a platform to doing it. Mm -hmm. As you may very well know, and to the listening audience, I'm Dr. E. Kelly Sanford, mm -hmm. professor of sociology at Tennessee State University. I've been there now over 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, I did a postdoc, which I would like to start off with today, at the Pennsylvania State University and State College, Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. where I looked at the gerontology. Mm -hmm. And um, prior to that, at Howard University in Washington, D.C., where I worked at a number of different places with the national headquarters of the American Red Cross on HIV AIDS education, which even here I've worked um, at, the, at the Meharry Medical Center on mm -hmm. HIV AIDS with the late Dr. Jacqueline Fleming. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to kind of stress that. As, and then at the National Organization of Black Law Enforcement Executives mm -hmm. leading, which is gonna be very much um, related to what I'm talking about today indirectly. Um, then I'm originally from North Carolina, North Carolina Central University, mm -hmm. um, and from Oxford, North Carolina. And so I'm delighted again to be here today. Very good. You know, Dr. Uh, Dr. Sanford, uh, when we talk about uh, the impact of technology on learning and education, that's a very, very important topic. Yeah. And, and having had an opportunity to uh, use technology in learning and education, I found that uh, I was able to make more progress yes. in terms of uh, various devices and et cetera, and et cetera, and to apply much of the things that I was able to learn yes. through education and uh, technology. So yes. let's, let's talk about it from your perspective okay. and give us some information in reference to that. Okay, and thank you again very much. And what I would like to do is try to frame it mm -hmm. with just by saying that technology more than any time in the history of the world has done exactly what you have just said. Mm -hmm. It has made us more connected. It has indeed allowed us to be able to, through different venues of using technology, stay in touch with people, people from different countries. We can text, we can email, and it's just a rapid change of social interaction yeah. through technology. Mm -hmm. But I would like to frame it by saying that we have moved in our society from an industrial society into a technological one and now into a telecommunications yes. society. And there are a vast amount of positive aspects of technology. Of course, you're in the communication world, so look at how we are able to do things today because of technology. 
Uh, we have the technology to be able to look way out in the ocean and then predict that a hurricane is going to come at a certain level. Mm -hmm. We have technology to be able to have um, satellites in outer space so we can horn in on different countries and know precisely what's going on. Um, we can have people to do an assessment of your home and your roof and they can use technology there in their office in Hendersonville or m many miles away and they can tell you how your roof is and give you assessment mm -hmm. from technology or look up where you're living. Mm -hmm. So it has all of those wonderful aspects of it and as you and I are professors, we lived at a time period where we had a blackboard mm -hmm. and now we have what they call a smart board. Mm -hmm. We were able to use chalk at one time, now we use a pencil on the board that we write on and it just magically comes and we can change the colors and do a lot of things mm -hmm. with it. We can pull up information as you've had me to bring up some of your shows here mm -hmm. right in my classroom mm -hmm. but I'm here today to talk about an essential problem mm -hmm. with the advancement of technology and how it has indeed moved so fast that the actual founders of technology had mm -hmm. in mind for citizens to become so dependent mm -hmm. so addicted to technology that they would have to have it Mm -hmm. And it's become a multi, multi billion dollar industry because of technology on the addiction and on the inherent needs mm -hmm. of us to have to have it and have this need for it. Mm -hmm. So while there are all these positive aspects of it that connects us, there could be a false sense of reality to that connection mm -hmm. that it prevents us from actually at this point in time mm -hmm. socially interacting on an individual level. So I would like to pick up with that aspect of it. Very good, and I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take our first commercial break, and then we'll come back and we'll have eight minutes for you to uh, talk about that aspect of it. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. We're talking to Dr. E.K. Sanford from Tennessee State University, and he's given us some information dealing with the impact of technology on education and learning. And of course, Dr., let's pick up where we left off and allow you over the next eight minutes to inform us in reference to this topic. And thank you again. And I left off by saying that how we have become so addicted and dependent upon technology mm -hmm. with all of its positive aspects, mm -hmm. that addictions was actually thought about in the beginning stages before it was ever invented. Mm -hmm. And felt that if we as humans became addicted to it, then we would have to economically pay for it. We would have to use our brains for the technology aspect of it and have a, such a need that we would want it more and more and more. Mm -hmm. Now we are finding that it is having some type of a impact in a negative way mm -hmm. on our cognitive, that means thinking ability, yes. okay. because we become so used to the technology doing it for us. Mm -hmm. And so now when we think in terms of education and thinking, some of the values of education that you and I had in elementary school, <coughs> to junior high school, to high school, they are the same, same collective idea of what we have to learn in our brains mm -hmm. as we did at our time as we have mm -hmm. to learn right now. Mm -hmm. But now students are so addicted to it that it's actually harmed the brain from mm -hmm. actually being able to mm -hmm. retain information, mm -hmm. to learn it, to understand the value of it because they feel that they are so addicted to the cell phones or to technology or Instagram or Facebooking mm -hmm. that that's their means of getting information, that's their means of trying to 
communicate with other people. So when it's time to bring their thoughts together and cognitively share it through social interaction individually, then they become very narrow in their ability to doing it. So I think a lot of scholars out there now in the, in the literature are finding, even in Silicon Valley, where they were coming up with the most highly advanced technological types of advances there mm -hmm. to then sell to the public and multi-billion dollars um, gains, mm -hmm are now seeing the negative impact. And they are feeling that it's moved to a mental disorder, oh, that we really don't feel that is mental disorder mm -hmm. because we have so much immediate gratification and a good feeling mm -hmm. in within ourselves to think that, oh, that's a good feeling. Let me do more and more of it. Let mm -hmm. me continue to do it to the point that people are becoming so lonely. We call it in sociology as far as Durkheim's theory on suicide, mm -hmm. anomie or anomatic, that we are so endeavored to be into the technology, mm -hmm. staying up long hours, staying involved in it, that we become lonely. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, we'll find suicide rates have mm -hmm. been increased because of technological advances. Mm -hmm. Not only are suicide rates becoming more so because of that lonely feeling, and there are websites where other people are feeling that same way, mm -hmm. and then comments are being made, and then they become connected to those negative, lonely feelings that they are then willing to commit suicide but also people are being bullied mm -hmm. online mm -hmm. to the point where they are feeling in their minds that this is something that is real, that they are willing to commit mm -hmm. suicide. So it's actually having a mental um, type of an impact on people because of our positive use of mm -hmm. it. So while many can see the gains of it and is unquestionable with yeah. technology advanced, that we are mm -hmm. able to do things like we've never done before. Good, uh, we're able to have all of these, from taking pictures to sending them to, to texting to all of those types of items are so positive, mm -hmm. but they are, we are finding now that it's negative impacting us cognitively. Mm -hmm. And when we look at PIJ and look at the sensory motor stages, mm -hmm. that's just the five senses for the listening viewers. Okay. How is technology now impacting a little child who needs to develop their hearing, their, their, their seeing, they're mm -hmm. touching mm -hmm. because they now are sitting in a scroller with computers in front of them and that action of going back and forth is stimulating the brain mm -hmm. that they want more and more of it. So when they cry, they're given the computer to stimulate the brain to have more and more okay. movement. Mm -hmm. And what we found is that the movement can go left or right, there's no, or left or right, right to left, up and down, doesn't make any difference. They are just, their brains are just being stimulated cognitively mm -hmm. while they are missing out on the human interaction of using those same senses that they need to develop as they move from zero to two years old, from two to seven, then then into the first grade. And by the third grade exam, they have become so addicted and cognitively mental mm -hmm. that they can, cannot understand how to do their homework how to retain information to do well on exams or to read and retain information or to understand how to share it back because they have not comprehended it well enough. So, so, so this is what you mean when you say the impact of technology on education and learning. Yes. That this is a really a kind of a negative while technology allows for a large number of opportunities, yes. it also has a, a, a whole train of negative kinds of things that uh, unless we are careful that we can get caught up in. Is that what we're saying? That's exactly what we're saying. Mm -hmm. And as you may remember, when the technology was coming out in such a large numbers, we were saying it's a positive thing to have all children to have an iPad mm -hmm. or have a laptop. And, and, and this has impacted them, was supposed to be positive, but the impact is now we are finding it being negative. Even if you Google, so here we are saying that Google, Google technology, uh, uh -huh. Silicon Valley, you are finding the people who are actually creating new apps and new mm -hmm. technology with, with computers and, and, and through technology are, are removing their children from tech schools mm -hmm. that were looked at positive and putting them into other learning environments like the Waldorf school mm -hmm. where they are dealing with the senses and dealing with understanding numbers and mm -hmm. dealing with cognitive development of touching, smelling, and feeling, mm -hmm. and speaking, and all of those things. They are doing that 
And they, and they are the ones that have all the money and the power to have their children to the best tech schools. But they know cognitively they are missing out on things. So now we mm. have to ask ourselves with um, lower income families, Good. how is that impacting them cognitively mm -hmm. not to do well on standardized tests or to learn to read and write and do arithmetic? Mm -hmm. Because we still live in a society that calls for those skill sets mm -hmm. and we are becoming lower in that if we are not aware of the impact of technology on learning and cognitive development. Oh, okay, Doctor, what we'll do, we'll uh, get ready for this first commercial break, but I think that this is the information that we were looking for because I think uh, many people understand the importance of technology, but they don't see them, and I don't think that many of us understand the impact that it is having upon mm -hmm. our everyday lives. And so what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break and we'll come back and we'll have eight minutes to further develop this idea as well as any others that you'd like to talk about. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. Okay, this is Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. The topic today is the impact of technology on <clears throat> learning and education. And Dr. E.K. Sanford from Tennessee State University has given us a review over some of the important problems dealing with uh, education, technology, and learning. Let's continue, yeah. Doctor. Okay, well, thank you again very much. And we were on this whole segment of the impact mm -hmm. of technology on our cognitive and that's thinking or, or the brain. Mm -hmm. Let's just move it right there mm -hmm. and how we might think that some of the things that we are seeing and the occurrences mm -hmm. of, our, of people's behaviors and conduct mm -hmm. is positive, but we are understanding from social science research now mm -hmm. that there is causing a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. But we have become so accustomed to the new way mm -hmm. of people's behaviors that we are not seeing it as a mental disorder. Mm -hmm. But we are finding lower scores, lower attention spans, mm -hmm. and it's a shift mm -hmm. in being in people having a cognitive ability to be able to do certain things as they should and be required to do. And so let, Instead of most of us applauding technology and how great it is and et cetera, what we're saying here now is that it has some drawbacks, some yeah. negative impacts and whatever. Yeah. Is that what we're talking yeah, we are, about? We are very much talking. Mm -hmm. And we know one of the aims of it was to make life better. Mm -hmm. We live in an American culture where we like efficiency, mm -hmm. we like fast pace, we like everything. And so technology fits into a capitalistic type of culture mm -hmm. that we are benefiting from by living in America. Mm -hmm. And it seems positive. Mm -hmm. But it is impacting us mentally at this point and we are not understanding that mental mm -hmm. incapacity that is causing our brain mm -hmm. to the point that we can almost go to the point of saying it's a mental disorder for us to be so addicted to it that we cannot 
control it. Now, so, is this a great sociological point of view now that most yeah. sociologists agree upon? I, I would think most psychologists, social, social psychologists, uh -huh. so, and, and then neuro. I want you. To, uh -huh. I want to even bring it into the science. Neuropsychologists are, and, and neuroscientists that understand the brain mm -hmm. are understanding the impact that it is actually having on our cognitive abilities. And let me just break down real quick cognitive ability. We've done it on the, on the show before, mm -hmm. but Piaget is one of the leading social psychologists that talks about the four different cognitive thinking stages mm -hmm. of human development. So as I state them, I want us to see how technology presently mm -hmm. is impacting that in a negative way. The first one is called the sensory motor stage. Okay. That means mm -hmm. the five senses. And if you can think about a person that's aware of the senses and that you expose a child from zero to two mm -hmm. and from two to seven of all the senses in a very positive way mm -hmm. through social interaction. Mm -hmm. And that helps them to develop their cognitive ability according to PIJ. Presently with technology, we're putting the iPhone or, or a, a laptop or an iPad in front of them with certain images that are moving back and forth with no meaning. Mm -hmm. And that is impacting their cognitive uh -huh. abilities as well. Mm -hmm. So they are seeing it, they are motioning with it, they are having an interest in it, but they are missing out on it, the sound of a bird or the mm -hmm. sound of other things that's around them uh -huh. in reality, or mom and dad being there talking with them mm -hmm. and hearing that interaction. So that's why it has become so negative. Now, if you're just out in the real world and notice how many instances families got their children in scrollers mm -hmm. and they have an iPad on the scroller okay. and that's entertaining them while they are shopping. Mm -hmm. But so they are missing out on seeing the different colors of cans, hearing the sounds of things that are being put in the baskets, hearing the, the cash register say ding, 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 mm -hmm. and all of those things that we are supposed to be exposed to to help with our cognitive development. That's the first stage. The second stage is called the pre-operational stage where we can add, multiply, subtract, and divide. So by being around just with two apples and one is going and doing with these things as far as being able to see images and understand a red apple, a yellow apple, those types of images. Or the Dr. Seuss books where you are reading and, and learning the cat in the hat and rhymes and rhythms. You can learn in this pre-operational stage. Now in the next one called the concrete operational stage is where we are at a stage of seven to 12 years old and there you can add, multiply, subtract, and divide. Now of course I know listeners saying, well you can use technology to do that and you can, but we're talking about the overemphasis of just being addicted to it where you are doing other things beyond learning your timetables mm -hmm. or how to multiply, subtract, and divide or to do those types of things and that's cognitively impacting us negatively. Mm -hmm. Now, you can stay, and this is where use of a computer can make you stay from 7 to 11 to the rest of your life when you're addicted to technology. Mm -hmm. You become so addicted to it that you can't move into the next level that's called the formal operational stage, and that's from 12 mm -hmm. years old where you can think abstractly, where you can understand a theory and then apply that to something. You know about the consequences of cause and effect. You understand that if I defer my gratification in learning in mm -hmm. school, I can do well on an SAT, then I can get into college, I can learn skills there, and then I can get a good job. Mm -hmm. That's what you're supposed to be at at 12 years old for the rest of your life. But if you're stuck at the concrete operational stage in computers, that will satisfy the cognitive thinking that you are satisfied with that mm -hmm. and you won't develop to be able to read a book and to retain what's in that book or to have the interest in understanding or discussing it with someone else or writing an essay. Mm -hmm. That's at the formal cognitive developmental stage. So while we are not going through that formal stage and that helps you to go to college and to read and to do well, mm -hmm. We are not there. It has already pulled us away. Mm -hmm. And the upcoming kids that are just being born or first, second, third grade or, or the newborns the first year, second, third year, mm -hmm. they are becoming so addicted to it that they are wanting it and will cry to have it. And now it's moving us into the point of being so addicted to it that people are being becoming lonely, this anomatic okay. type mm -hmm. of state. And they are feeling mm -hmm. that they are meeting others through cyberspace and through the computer of others that are feeling lonely. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, there's a shift 
in communication. So when you say, mm -hmm. oh, are you communicating? Yes, but with people uh, on the internet that's right. or uh, within cyberspace, mm -hmm. and they are not having the human contact or touching and feeling and verbal communication, very similar to what we are doing right now. Mm -hmm. That's being lost. Mm -hmm. And some people, we have seen the statistics go up in suicide rates because people are being convinced that they are in touch while they are really lonely and they are meeting others that are speaking through computers in the same way mm -hmm. and then they are committing suicide. Mm -hmm. While the mothers and fathers and friends would not even recognize that shift in behavior because mm -hmm. they are one way and they have an online type of place where they go to speak about this other aspect of their personality mm -hmm. that is feeling lonely and, and, and is not recognizable by families and peers and friends. And, and when so something, suicide rates something are going bad up. happens in reference to that, yes. the family didn't know, didn't nobody know. Didn't had any idea, and et cetera. Is that Absolutely. what we're saying? Absolutely. That's uh -huh. exactly. Uh -huh. well, and they're becoming so addicted to it, they're staying up late at night, mm -hmm. losing rest. Mm -hmm. Yes. We've got about a minute and a half. Okay. Uh, what so, would you suggest that we do in terms of breaking that cycle. Well, great. This has been a great program to really first and foremost to understand that it is indeed a problem. You mm -hmm. have to understand there's a reoccurring pattern. Mm -hmm. problem. The second now, you have to regulate it. You have to use it in a positive way, give some time for fun, but then it has to be regulated as far as how much time is, is used on the cell phones. Mm -hmm. If universities could have an app to allow uh, a, a break with it for an hour and off of it, if they don't use it in a smart way, you can't, the students would be much better off mm -hmm. by reading the newspaper or listening to news on it and mm -hmm. using it in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So families must regulate it. We must understand it. Mm -hmm. And hopefully at, in religious institutions will understand the problem too so we can change some behaviors and understand the shift and how it's mentally negatively impacting our learning and cognitive ability. And so technology is fine. And we all ought to ascribe for technology, but it can have some serious drawbacks. Is Absolutely. That, is, is that the final statement that we want to is. try to and make? And it has to have a great balance. Mm -hmm. Very good. And of course, let me uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Sanford, for giving us that excellent information and allowing us to see things from a different perspective. And you don't have to be young in order to have that to happen to you because I can see some of the, some of the th ideas myself yes. in what you're talking about. Absolutely. But anyway, thank you. And let me encourage our audience to tune in again next week for another informative edition of Comments. Thank you and good morning.